Hey, what's up, guys? Welcome to Midwest Days of Thunder Live. I am Brian Kozad, number eighty, uh, number eighty-seven of the Cup Series for uh, Cow Motor Sports. And with me, we have Bob Johnson, driver of the number seventy-six Chevy Camaro, also with Cow Motor Sports. We also have Christopher Bud with Team Nidic Racing, uh, number thirteen. Mike have... Pierre, number twenty-one from Bash Brothers Racing. And Travis Eccles, number 72, Ford Mustang, no team. Mike off. Mike on. We are the Midwest Days of Thunder iRacing Series. We have uh, three divisions. We have our beginner league, which is our ARCA Series. We use that to feed to our uh, other two series. Uh, it is broadcasted on YouTube by Goonie Broadcasting. And we have our Xfinity series. Currently, that is not broadcasted, but we are looking for possible broadcasters for it. And then we have our Crown Jewel, our NASCAR Cup series. It's broadcasted on Signature Esports, on YouTube, Facebook, and Twitch. You can follow us at Midwest Days of Thunder on Facebook. We are sponsored by Buck Kicker. My God, uh, it is a device that attaches to your seat that lets you feel the rumble. I can speak from experience. I just received mine in the mail today, actually, from a sister league of ours last night, Struck Racing. Um, it is a truly immense experience. You can visit their website at www.buckkicker.com. And we have Trackworks. They specialize in not only sim equipment, but also real race cars. Um, they, some of their rig accessories are pretty awesome. You need to go check them out. Uh, their website is www.trackworks.ca. And Severe Weather Country, a group of veteran storm chasers who specialize in intercepting intense tornadic supercells across Tornado Alley. Grab a front row seat to the nonstop action. www.severeweathercountry.com Mike on. Hey, we, got, we have Proletas. They are a protein-packed post-workout ice cream bar. They have a wide variety, variety of flavors from... Vanilla to chocolate, strawberry, uh, you know, for your inner white girl, they got pumpkin spice. And my fl my favorite is orange. Um, they're owned and operated out of the Dallas, Texas area. If you want to learn more, you can go to www.proletas.com. All right, now the sponsors are over. Uh, my race went pretty well. How about, how about you, you guys? Mine was a rolling story. dumpster fire. Yeah. I can pretty much say the same for mine. <laughs> yeah, mine too. Mine was a rolling dumpster fire that was crushed by a monster truck. Mine wasn't quite as bad. It was, it was rough, but I, I, I at least got a decent finish out of it. Yeah, I blew a motor and ended up finishing like 19, 20 laps down, somewhere around there. I don't think it could have went much worse for me. You could have disconnected your yeah. connections suspect at times. Yeah, that's about yeah. the only thing that worse that could have happened there. <laughs> well, I got rear-ended my Mr. Magoo, so I got turned and my steering was damaged the rest of the race and I really couldn't uh, hold the car down and I was too scared to use my fast repair too early because I figured I'd need it late in the race and that ended up costing me two or three laps. Yeah, I was really... Uh, worried about my fast repair because I'd got so much damage. I had Mr. Alshire clear himself, which I, I understand what happened, but uh, I got pancaked into the wall in a Adam and Wall sandwich. I didn't want to use my fast repair because I didn't, I didn't want to use it and then be screwed later in the race, caught if I got caught up in something. But luckily, it didn't affect my speed too awful much. Yeah, I might accidentally use my fast repair, unfortunately, but, you know, I had a chance to come back and just, just kind of blew it myself, pushed it a little too hard. Yeah, I got caught uh, 
there's the outside car on a three wide coming out of one of the corners. Uh, Phil bumped the wall and hit AJ and AJ hit me and sent me spinning and down into the inside wall. Knocked the whole front end off my car. I think that was the worst damage of the night before I blew my motor. There were a lot of modified looking cars at the end of this race. Yeah. Yeah. I, know yeah. <laughs> I didn't know NASCAR had a modified series. One car didn't have a front or back end. Uh, I forgot who that was, but it was uh, a nasty McComas. looking car. That was Stephen McComas. Had yeah, but fortunately, Bristol, Bristol doesn't have too much of an arrow to worry about. You just drive around. Yeah, I was kind of mad that I didn't have, uh, you know, I couldn't get a good draft off anybody. I don't know why. <laughs> He ain't going too fast to get a draft, but I know a lot of people accidentally use our fast repairs. Uh, did anybody else accidentally use theirs? Yeah, I accidentally used mine the third yeah. time I got put in. Yeah, yeah I, I, I clicked mine off. Start of the race, I clicked mine off automatically. Yeah, after every caution, I have a mental checklist now. I'm like, make sure I'm in the right one to go. Okay, right gear, uh, fast repair turned off. Yeah, I, I go down like a mental checklist now, so I don't don't mess myself up. And, we, and it's a big difference now too, where we just went from you know two fast repairs down to one now, and it's 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 costly. Yeah, having that extra fast repair was nice last season to kind of bank on it, and you know. But and this it, is the track too, where I I modified it for the first hundred laps and. And I finally used my fast repair, and on that restart, there was a wreck, and I went back to being a modified. Yeah. Yeah, I like the one fast repair, though. I think it's more realistic. It makes you race uh, more cautious. But yeah. then again, if you know you get taken out in somebody else's mess, it kind of screws you. But that's how racing is. And you can see the 11 right there just bump somebody on the uh, under caution. Yeah. I can't tell what number it is, 24, 24 maybe? 24, yeah. That's uh, Joey. Yes, it is. He had a good chance too until I, till we got into Pimper there and spun him. I thought he was going to the outside, and he, he come he come almost to a stop, and I just spun him on accident. So he plowed right into him. That, I called that my fault too. So, well, it all started when I bounced off the wall and down into you. Yeah, that was yep. a lot of beating and banging. Man. Yeah, this, this Bristol, I know. At the beginning of the race, I wasn't. I qualified fourth, but I wasn't pushing it at all. And I, I had buds behind me. And I know he gave me a nice ass shot, and I was like, "I hope he's not upset at me." Now you slowed, you slowed up a little bit, and I was like, "Oh my god, I'm gonna hit him!" <laughs> yeah, because I was like, "I'm just, I'm just chilling." Like I wasn't, I never pushed this entire race, especially at the end, because how this track is, old tires, you can't pass on the bottom. It's one lane. So that's why in the last couple of laps, Colin was beating my back bumper off. Just because I wasn't going as fast as him, but he couldn't get around. Yeah, I... And this track, it was kind of weird because we, we we're... It just seemed like it was a crazy race, and all of our past races have not even been close to this crazy. We're, you know, pretty good drivers here, but it was just... It was a madhouse. And I guess it's just Bristol. They don't say that it's kind of like flying F1 fighters in a gymnasium for a reason. <laughs> that ain't no lie. Thunder Valley, baby. Yeah, that's what it was for sure. You throw a blindfold yeah, on a, a couple of, of us, and you know, it's more fitting. Yeah, well, I thought a couple did have blindfolds on out there. <laughs> I did for about Yeah, I was scared as around that two car. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah he, he really had a hard race. He qualifies really good every week whenever he races. He, he should be back now. He's back from uh, Harvest. But he he started like beside me. I'm like, oh, no. Don't do not do anything, please. Not yeah, he'd, he'd, hit, just... he'd bounce off the wall three or four times in front of me. If I'd pass him, he'd come roaring back trying to pass me, and then he'd hit the wall again. I'm like, oh, my God, we're done. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I'd, he'd hit the wall, I'd get underneath him, pass him, and same thing. He'd get right up underneath me and try to pass me. It's like, okay, I'm just going to let off and let him go by. Or, 
you know, I'm just going to shut down the inside so he can't go around me down there. Or on the flip side of that, the last race we were here is that John Knight at Q was about four laps down in the first three laps. And on this one, he was right up there. He got a top 10 finish. And Yeah. Yeah, John. Yeah, that uh, was really cool for him. He's, he's struggled here. Yeah, I, I would say he was probably the most improved from the last time we were here last season. Yeah, he just surprised me. I know a couple of times I was like, oh, he's he's still up here. That's um, that's it wasn't like him last year or last year last season. Yeah. Felt like a year ago. Yeah, last season it was like he was driving around the track, you know, down four cylinders. He was so slow. But you know, talking to his teammates, he's he's put in quite a few laps here to get some more track time and seat time. And it really showed this week. Yeah, you only usually want to get embarrassed once at a track before you uh, try to put in the extra effort not to have that happen again. Yeah, that doesn't work. Yeah, we purposely made him run around (laughs) us in practices and stuff so he could get around, figure out how to drive with the other cars around and give him some speed boosts and stuff like that. We we worked with him quite a bit. That's yeah, good. That's what, what teammates that's need what to teammates do. That's what teammates are for. I'll get better. Unless All you're me, and then get you, better. You, know, you start off the season really good with a fourth place finish at Daytona, and then you don't finish above 15th the rest of the races. Yeah, hey, we, everybody's had their fair share of bad luck this season. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, that's me every race. Yeah. <laughs> So who if do we think there no luck? You'd have no luck. Yeah. So who do we think the controversy surrounds here this time at this track? Um, probably me, seeing as I accidentally wrecked two of the uh, two of the better drivers in our league. It was completely incidental. I didn't mean to get into AJ, and uh, he let me hear it on voice chat and let me feel it after the race. And I also got into their teammate, Austin Bloom, just trying to give him room, and I hit the wall. I know they wasn't very happy with me. And I was halfway expecting to get a a, a bumper to my uh, right quarter panel because they was behind me the entire rest of the race. Yeah, I was pretty livid at Adam when he spun me on lap 32 or whatever it was. But Adam's a good driver. I'm just kind of busting him a little bit, just... You know, yeah, everybody, he just, you know, it was a bad race, bad move, whatever. But overall, he's a great driver. And I let him know my displeasure under caution and moved on. Everybody say I if he was personally affected by Adam this race. I. I. I think it was a bad race. Yeah, I, I think it was the accident that Adam and Travis had. And I, I was, I'd just come out of the pits or something. And they, I see them spinning, one at the top of the track, one at the bottom of the track. And I had to slide my car sideways to get through both of them. I think that was my move of the race. And I don't that understand that. I remember you told me to remember that. Yeah. I, I, I barely hit the wall with my front end, the inside wall. Barely hit it. But yet my steering was completely jacked. And it was just... After that, it felt like my tires were gone. I couldn't turn the car, keep it on the bottom to stay out of the way. Uh, I think I almost ran, bumped into Austin, I think, when he was leading or something just because I couldn't turn. Yeah, I think what saved me from having steering issues like that, because my car, nothing on it was straight afterwards. Because um, whenever I got sandwiched by Adam, I think it helped because I got hit by him and the wall so it didn't offset my tires i felt like i kept my tires aligned i didn't have any steering issues miraculously and i know what happened with adam he had a bad race and he made a mistake and he was just pushing way too hard and getting frust- probably getting a little frustrated which is understandable we've all been there and just had a bad oh yeah race. definitely yeah, it, it took me to about halfway through the race to finally find a good, comfortable groove where I wasn't just burning the hell out of the right front tire and sliding all over the track. Well, this is the track, too, that, you know, any 
any misjudgment is multiplied by 10 and just everything is multiplied by 10 at this track. Yeah. Overall, I mean, I think, I think it wasn't a terrible race. I don't no. think it was terrible. It was just we, everybody was a little more aggressive this time, trying to be a little better than everybody else, which is going to happen. That's racing for you. Yeah, yeah, but, you know, talking about people being better than everybody else, you know, we got Brian who went out there and won the damn thing. Yeah, after literally saying, I don't like this track, I don't know how to drive it, and I don't want to race. I almost just parked it. I almost started and parked and, almost, and did win the thing somehow. But the way I won it, the wrecking, the seven and the uh, three by accident aside, I didn't enjoy how I won that race because it just exposed Bristol for what it is on iRacing, which is one oh, groove. Oh, my spin right there. <laughs> it's one groove racing. Yeah. There's no way around that. It's If you're on the top, you're going to win on old tires because they can't pass you on the bottom. Like on the screen right now, you see like people making pass. That's also Del Duke on the bottom, but Colin couldn't get past me. I know he couldn't, so I just... I won. I'm happy, but I still don't like the track because it is it. Yeah, it, it is personal. It's it's a hard track to get around and keep all fenders on your car. And but you know that win just punched your ticket to the playoffs. So that you know yeah, kind of eases the pain a little house bit money, through the season. Just got a yeah, after I feel like I was kind of robbed at uh, Wilkesboro. Uh, it was finally, it was nice to win this race and know I'm in no matter what happens. Now I just got a points race to get my positions up. So when it comes to playoff time, I have room to play with. And when it comes to the uh, rounds, I think what I want to do is win a race, kind of half-ass the season and start like 14th. Yeah. Good points. Yeah, I think the next time that we come to Bristol, we'll be in the playoffs. We'll be in the same round with uh, Watkins Glen. So that that round in the yeah, playoffs. Yeah, that's going to be, gonna be fun. Yeah, that stinks. I'm going to have to win this to advance to the playoffs or advance to the next round because Watkins Glen road courses are my weakness. So I have to do good here next time. We we know how you, you're, you're the ringer for the first. road courses, Travis. We all know that. Yeah, me. Yeah, <laughs> I'm I'm the ringer, all right. I'm... So there was a uh, we had another race in M dot here at uh, Bristol this weekend. We had our Arca series. They're the final race of the season. Championship was locked up. I think two or three races ago at this point. But we still had a race to uh, close out our season. Good season of Arca, and it was quite the finish to the season. Yeah, four wide coming yeah, out the of the thing final with Arca. Well, you know, four wide. You know, we have so many good drivers in Arca, and it seemed like the four one, four of the best drivers were uh, side by side at Bristol of all places going for the win and it turned into a photo finish that uh even confused i racing i think and in our opinion gave the win to uh the driver that came in second so we had to kind of uh manually reverse decision and give it to uh al Corey, who video and photo evidence showed actually crossed the line ahead of uh christopher schmorl yeah somehow we, our uh, Arca drivers broke iRacing and exposed it to, because uh, we, now we all know how they do their scoring loops and stuff. It goes off the dash of your car, not your nose. And So you guys know how close it was. Smoral won on iRacing by four thousandths of a second. That's pretty insane. Yeah, yeah. I mean, and I don't know what the spread was between Al Corey and whoever came in fourth, but it, it was not much more than that because they were all on top of each other. Yeah. I believe it was all under a tenth of a second. It, it, yeah, that's narrow, still pretty insane. 
Yeah, as narrow as Bristol is, for them to be four wide coming to the finish line it is amazing. It shows you the kind of level, right. the skill level our drivers have. Right. Yeah, and, and the Archer the series, is they're really producing some good drivers. I'm really happy with how that series is going, too. That's been awesome. The thing with Corey, I mean, you hear about drivers at Daytona, Talladega, being in fourth, fifth, sixth place on the last corner and coming in to win using the draft. Corey was in fourth place in turn four at Bristol, a half mile track, and still won. Got around three cars. And to me, that's just incredibly impressive. I'd agree. Yeah, you know, we had bend it down on the inside and stayed clear of that little bit of a mess that they had up top. But I mean, three wide coming out of a corner at Bristol is usually unheard of. So we we give them some slack on on getting together. Yeah, it gets a little tight coming out of those corners two wide, let alone trying to do it three wide. Oh yeah, definitely. Well, I mean, last lap at Bristol, it's time to drop the gloves and whatever happens happens. Yeah, they have yeah, some. It it was uh, you know, it took us what a day to to fully sit and process the oh, and days. figure out who two days to sit and process it. Yeah, and you know, yeah, you know, so I, I do it NASCAR. Yeah, style. do it. Uh, do it like they did back with Lee Petty. At, I think it was the Daytona 500. I think it was the first Daytona 500. Yes. Where, I think it was Tuesday after the race where they called him at dinner and told him he won. And I think Lee Petty told him to call back after dinner because he can't interrupt me during family time. Yeah. Yeah, it was definitely a, uh, quite the finish. Luckily, even though it's controversial and we had to reverse iRacing's call, it didn't affect anything in the grand scheme of things. Second place, we're all supposed to be iRacing's first, our second. We still locked out of the championship a week or two ago. Now we have Al Corey with his first win. He's coming up the cup, as with as is uh, Smora, I believe. So we get to start racing with them every week. Yeah, we. That's going to be awesome. Yeah, and we also promoted uh, Matt Forns from the ARCA series up to the Cup series today. So that's another driver that I'm really looking forward to being on the track and competing with. Yeah, well, I'm not because all these guys are good. I may find myself back in ARCA pretty soon. Hey, hey yeah. if my luck keeps going the same way, I'm going to be racing Legends cars because they're not even going to let me in the ARCA series. Well, Xfinity's free, so let's just go. <laughs> Speaking of which, Xfinity series has been pretty fun so far. It's it's turned out to be a good little learning lesson for everybody that's coming up from the ARCA series to the Cup, and then the Cup guys been in there racing too. It's been fun. Yeah, it, it's yeah. it's been a lot of fun. You know, the the cars handle a lot different than the Cup cars, at least to me. Oh, uh, they definitely do. But, yeah, you got to drive those guys a little different than you do most of the other cars. So, but they, they, they're a lot of fun to 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 wheel. But it gives you, you good experience around your other drivers. Plus, coming up with some of the newer drivers, you get an experience of how they handle the cars and how they drive around other cars and stuff too. So that's a it's a good learning curve for everybody. I love the Xfinity cars. I love that series. Um, of course, tomorrow I'll probably have a bad race and be cussing Xfinity and foul never to race it again. But as of right now, this very moment, I really like that series. Yeah, but Travis, didn't you say that he's thought art the uh, Xfinity cars basically drove the same as Cup? At first, they're they're, they're a little different, um, but to me, I really can't tell a whole lot of difference. Um, for whatever reason, though, I don't know if it's psychological or what, but I enjoy the Xfinity more than Cup. I, I think they drive quite different. I feel like with those cars, you actually have to wheel a little bit more and throttle control, whereas Cup at like at Las Vegas, for example, I felt like Cup was kind of just boring, just regular old mile and a half in a Cup car. Xfinity, it felt fun. Same with Michigan. Yeah, I agree with that. So, in my book, we're three for three on fun tracks to race with Xfinity car, and I am i don't think it's the tracks. 
I think it's the car being Any, uh, being fun. Now this week we're going to the Legacy Phoenix track. Yes, and, and which I personally love. Yeah, that's a good track. I like that one too. You know, I I kind of struggled a little bit last night in a practice session that we had, but I, I think you know once I got around it the other cars a little bit more i started getting it figured out and it was it was a blast to run i didn't know y'all had practice last night i would have joined that i I, I must have went to bed early i was so frustrated yeah i think think you snuck out and were in doing dirty things to your pillow yeah yeah, sounds about right Yeah. The thing too is, is getting around other cars with the Xfinity, even in the cup, the trucks. I mean, it's just about every car you can race on here is just getting, if you're going into practice session, you're always going to try to overdo it and you get into a race session. It's a little bit different anyway. So, yeah. Yeah, most definitely. Um, if you looked at our practice, our practice before our Bristol race, you'd think it'd be caution every two laps. Everybody was spinning, hit each other. Got into the race and lap times was just faster and everything in practice. Everybody's pushing it, trying to see where their car's going to break at. So yeah, yeah. it, it looked, looked like a rolling demo fun. derby, you know, before the race. But you know, once that green flag dropped, it was night and day difference. And we we I think we finished that race with seven cautions, which for yeah, Bristol is seven bad. cautions. Yeah, practice was a uh, was chaos the hour before the race, but you know, you know, I was trained. I was testing different wheel settings and brake bias and offset, and you know, I'm sure everybody else is too. And that's what's causing these wrecks because we're trying to, you know, hone in on what setup is going to work for us that night. Yeah, that's a big thing. I got to convert y'all to not not going to convert y'all's religion. I need to convert y'all to. 16 and 14 to 1 steering ratios and they help a lot i used 16 last night and i liked it while my while my car was running good i should say yeah After, and it was great i used I, I felt i tried 16 i felt like it was a little too floaty for me it, i felt too disconnected from the track i did 14 to 1 yeah, I so I, bristol i do a 12 to 1 i think that's where i was last night too is a 12 to 1 yeah that was the, the i racing default Uh, to me, it feels like it's, I can control the car a lot better. Like, Not gets, so jerky, herky-jerky. Yeah, because everything's smoother. It's a lot smoother of a transition. and Yeah, now I the, saved your tires because of that as well. On the plate tracks, I go down to 8-1. to one. I just, if I want to turn, I want to make sure the wheel's going to turn in a hurry. And so the stiffer the wheel, the better I like it. Yeah, play tracks. I qualify sixteen to one just so I'm not scrubbing milliseconds off with uh, with a high steering ratio. But I turn it back down to like ten or twelve to one because I don't want to be white knuckling the the uh, wheel going around there. I, eight to one, it's bump 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 bump. You know, yeah, that's do with your feedback too and your wheel. Some of it does. Yeah. Yeah, I I really don't touch my uh, ratio at cup tracks. I, you know, I've pretty much just left it at whatever uh, I racing sets it at. But you know, then again, the last two races I've been playing with it. So when, when we go to uh, Talladega next, it might be I might drop it to. 10 to 1 or 8 to 1 or something like that. Who knows? Yeah. So, let's see. Next week, we well, we're off next week for Thanksgiving. I think we're going to have, like, a just a for fun race, not broadcast or anything. But next season race, for Cup at least, is New Hampshire, which to me is a complete wild card. Not because it's a crazy track, but... We've never ran a flat track like that. The closest we've came is what Phoenix. 
but that's it's flat, but not New Hampshire flat. Yeah, it's not got the bump stops in it. Yeah, yeah, like it's it's gonna be insane. I don't know who's gonna win because we we haven't seen each other drive a flat track yet. Definitely gonna be interesting. Yeah, uh, you know it's gonna I'm, be. I'm kind of trying to bank my predictions off of last year's or last season's uh, Phoenix race. You know, since that's about the flattest track we've run so far. And, uh, you know, I think, was it Adam that won that race? Or was running right up front? No. Colin, Colin was, uh, won it, but Adam was in the lead. Adam, I think, scraped the wall coming out of four. Yeah. Like three or two to go. And Colin go back. Adam didn't have a win all of last season, and this season he has two wins, so... He's yeah, improving, I, but I can see him being a favorite. Yeah, I, I think I might pull for, you know, Adam. He's, you know, like you said, he's gotten two wins already this season, you know. Didn't, well, if I have anything to do with it, he won't. <laughs> but I will pull for him. He has done yeah. good this year, so or this season. Yeah, I think anybody, anybody out of that group, uh, Hill Motorsports or Upfront Racing, they're always up there. They've always got a decent shot at winning at these tracks. See, I'm going the other direction on that. I don't think they're going to have a good race because they're fast and they tend to, uh, I don't know if they can save their equipment that long, save their tires because this track is eating tires. Uh, and if they try to do that at this race, it's they're going to fade and they're going to fade bad. Yeah, they're, they're quick, not fast. That's their issue. Um, I, my I'm gonna have my official lock. This is this is my pick for the race, Doug Erickson, because he's just he's our fucking Kevin Harvick. Where the fuck did he come from? He just kind of is there in the top five every yeah, every race. He's a and, damn good driver, and I feel like he's just gonna pull out a win. Because I I swear I can't remember ever racing him. He's just always there. Yeah, <laughs> I don't want like he's really good. Yeah, so that's gonna it, be my pick. Just completely random. He's gonna win one. Yeah, and you know he, like you said, he's just kind of, he's the magic man. You know, he just appears out of nowhere, and it's all he's always up front. I don't Amazing. think he's had a really bad race yet. I don't know. I'm kind of going for one of the Nidec boys, and that includes Tavor. They're they're fast, they're good, and it seems like they save their stuff a little bit better than in, than some of the other faster cars. So it wouldn't surprise me if one of those guys won. Yeah, Joe's really good. He's a really good driver. He's quick and he's he's very uh, standoffish at times when it comes to getting around people and stuff. But he's he's been up there. He's just had some bad luck getting getting around everybody. Yeah. The... Well, what's your thoughts on it on it, Tim Perry? Who do you think's gonna win at uh, New Hampshire? Um, I was actually going to go exactly what Travis had said. Uh, it wouldn't surprise me if either of the Nidic boys pull out a win here. Um, that includes Tabor. Um, I, I could say Bud's too, but I'm going to yeah, beat his know. ass. So no. <laughs> yeah, it's definitely it's the first time M Dot's gone to that track or any track like it. I mean, there's nothing really else like it on the oval circuit except for Milwaukee Mile, which is basically the exact same track um it's and also it's going to be interesting and i think the key to how interesting is it going to be is if we're getting the green flag runs or if it's going to be cautions every 20 laps i think it's going to be a lot of green um this is the track where you can see people next to you fairly easily um so I think it's going to be green for quite a while. And if that's the case, pit strategy and tire wear will be the deciding factors. I kind of feel like it's going to be a one groove track too. Cause if you get, try to pass on the inside, you, you get a little squirrely coming out on the low side. But that could just come up to driver skill. I mean, maybe somebody could just tether that throttle just the right way, figure out how to run the bottom and, just dominate because they could actually pass people on the bottom. 
Yeah, well, it'll be interesting to see how that plays out, too. Yeah, I see I, a lot of practices in our future. I do, too. <laughs> Same here. Yeah. I, I have yet to turn any laps at New Hampshire, so I have no idea what to expect. You know, I got I. It takes me a while to really be able to find my groove at you know tracks like that. So, well, we got two weeks to find it. Yeah. Well, I'm warning y'all now. I'm using my bumper more. You know, I sick of getting turned and everything. I'm gonna be the one that's gonna be turning people now because I I need to have a better season than what I'm doing. I'm being too cautious. I should have used my bumper twice last night and I would have avoided the whole mess, but I didn't and it cost me. Yeah, definitely. I mean, the biggest thing is I think you just need to get up, like, away from some of, like, the back markers. I think you, like, you get trapped back there because you just get caught up in stuff. Well, I don't, I don't like or to qualify. Too cautious yeah, to I'm too cautious is what it is. And, you know. and uh, I don't like to qualify. I like to start in the back and just let the race develop and see where it goes and – try to gain spots in um, pit stops and stuff like that. But I need to, you know, I got to get out of that habit. I'm, I'm same boat, you know, the last couple races I haven't qualified. I've tried starting from the back and, you know, possibly trying to chase that uh, hard charger bonus point that we get for our points. And it blows up in my face every time. I get trapped behind somebody yeah, that's what or it's... just make, I get dumped or something stupid happens and it ruins my race. I tell you what, who was giving me a hard time last night trying to pass and nothing against him. He was doing a good job, but Dale Duke, my God, it felt like his car was three cars wide. Yeah, I'll yeah. second that. <laughs> yeah, he, he was, he was surprisingly clean because usually he struggles at, uh, tracks like this but he ran a pretty pretty clean race and like you said he was just a bear to try to get around yeah he, one time i was coming my golf uh it was a time where me and bloom just pulled away we was within two three tenths of each other going through lap traffic and dale duke came, ran my gone before and i had to check up i'm like don't don't make me bumpy out the way or get get out the way because I blew him right on my ass. I don't want him to get past me because of a lap car. Yeah, I did the same thing to him. I know you, if y'all heard him in the chat last night, he was talking about me bumping him, but he just he kept getting pushing up on me with another car on my rear end knowing I was faster. So I just I didn't hit him. I just bumped him and like, come on, man, like move, move a little bit. Yeah. See, I've always been too polite to do that, but not anymore. I just, I don't know. I've always been scared of wrecking people, but I'm going to have to get over that. Yeah, see, I, I flipped that switch this season. Um, not, like, being more aggressive. Like, I'll be, like, I'll put my car places where I think I can make it stick. I'm not going to intentionally wreck people. But I'm to the point now where it's, like, I'm going to race how I know I can race. And if I get hit because somebody below me gets loose because I forced them down there, if I get wrecked, I didn't do anything wrong. They got loose. It's their fault. They should know to let off. Or... I know there's room there. They should know to give me room on the wall because I'm there. There's no more just backing out of everything where it's like, oh, I made wreck. Oh, I made wreck. Like, for me, it's just full steam ahead. If you race me hard, I'll race you hard. Like, whenever, before I got into AJ accidentally, we was racing hard, coming off of two. He slid up in front of me with maybe an inch, to, like an inch clear. So I was going to race him hard. I actually bumped him. Didn't mean to, but I was also not going to let off early. Like, oh, he's ahead of me. Like, I'm going to take that position back because he raced me hard. Bloom races me hard, and I really enjoy it. I try to give him room, and I end up getting to the wall and wrecking him. But I'm to the point now where it's like, I'm going to race my own race. And I know I'm not going to do anything wrong if I get caught up in a wreck because I forced somebody in a position where they don't okay you can't drive that's racing i didn't do anything wrong i hold my lines i think you need to do that travis it's just you know your own abilities don't race differently around people because you're scared of what they may do 
yeah, I'm gonna have to start doing that. And um, if I can get separation from people, I can start turning some fast laps. But I get close to somebody and I start worrying. Okay, what are they gonna do? Are they gonna come down and clip me, send me spinning, have to use a fast repair, or damage my car, and I can't race anymore? You know, I, I like to points race, and that's the bigger picture that I look at. But I'm gonna have to get around that and start going for, you know, five to ten, fifth to tenth place finishes like I was getting last year. But I don't know for whatever reason this year I'm just not getting it. I think we don't have as many cautions now, and you're not able to just work the it, field. Like, yeah, yeah, work yeah. the work the field and get up there. Um, yeah, we've we've had know, like a couple guys that we've bumped back down to Arca because. Of various reasons we've had a couple guys that have left that were known for bringing out cautions so you know i think that's what really has changed for us this season you know we we went what our last two races have had like three cautions in each and they were all at the beginning yeah that michigan race my god i almost fell asleep driving because there was no cautions Dude, yeah the one thing i'm going to say travis that may change your mind on the qualifying thing the only race that i call i might as well not have qualified i qualified last because i messed up my laps messed up my lap the only race that i started in the bottom 10 was michigan and michigan is also one of my worst finishes because i got caught up in bs at the beginning so Qualifying helps. It's that one track position, but also if you qualify in the top 10, you're away from the clusterfuck that happens in the back. Well, here's here's another reason. I don't know if y'all know this or not. I may have mentioned it before, but I have real bad anxiety. And starting in the back lets me get into a, a, uh, a groove until I start feeling comfortable and I start relaxing a little bit and I can start you know, trying to race. Uh, but the first, I don't know, depending on what track we are, first five to ten laps, I'm a nervous wreck. Oh, I, you know, I, every race I have butterflies and, you know, I'm sweaty palm before we even start. But, you know, like you, same with you, get five laps in or so, usually I can catch my groove and start calming my ass down. But yeah, yeah. Same, same here. I get the anxiety. Same same thing. About 10 laps to go, as long as the cars around me are doing good and holding their lines and stuff, I, I calm right down and then I get in my groove. But it, until then, I'm, I'm a nervous wreck too. So. Yeah, I think I'm going to start taking my anxiety medication later in the day. So it's still, still working when it comes to race time. See, I have the opposite thing where I get, depends on, of course, where I'm at in late race, but those last 10 laps, last 20 laps, so like the race last night, I was like, I was mirror driving most of that. I don't remember looking out the front too much. I was like, where's Colin? Where's Colin? Where's Colin? But I was also staying calm. Um, I guess I'm lucky in that, that I'd get nervous, but I just, I guess I've learned to deal with it because I've done so much. I did like a super speedway league, and I, after running that nearly every week, like at super speedways, I don't get nervous anymore. It's like this is normal. It's, it's, I don't know. I'm glad I don't have to deal with some of that like you guys do, where you're nervous at the beginning of every race. I usually get at the end though. Oh, it, at the end, if I'm really in a good fight, you know my my nerves kick up a little bit more. But yeah, same. If I'm in a good position, top ten or so, like like I had the first couple races where I get the nerves back a little bit, but I'm still not as anxious, I guess you would say. Yeah, I don't have that. You know, towards the end of the race, if I'm racing for a good position, uh, I, I don't have that, and it, it goes away. And what I call it, 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 it's time for big balls, and it just takes over, you know, and start making some moves. I just haven't been in that position this year so far. Yeah, I know this. Mine's, you know, I, I get a little... Yeah, you know, like I said, the, the the nervousness, the anxiousness kicks in a little bit, but the focus jumps up threefold. You know, I get into into that zone. You know that my adrenaline starts pumping, my old you know feelings from like when I was playing football just start kicking back in, and I, I live for the end of the races on a 
when I'm actually running good. Yeah, the the biggest part that got my nerves going in Bristol was that last restart, where on the restart before, like 10 laps earlier, Colin beat me turn one and took the lead. I knew that the only way to win was to have the lead going into turn one so that's following behind you. So I was all nervous thinking, like, I just have to... This whole race comes down to this restart, assuming we don't have any more cautions. So I was very nervous with that. Luckily, I uh, luckily I got a really good start. I think I caught him sleeping a little bit. And, uh, yeah, I, that was pretty nerve-wracking there for a little bit. Yeah, um... That's why everybody kind of, with the littlest incidents, like, we all snap real quick at each other because it's just we're all so anxious yeah so that's why that i never is, take anything said in voice chat like i never take it personal that, uh, that and also with we as a league with the drivers we have doing what we're doing now we all know better the drivers are getting better everybody's getting better as teams and as as a league by themselves so we kind of expect that little bit of notch up to say you know what hey that was my fault or Something, you know what I mean? Like, and the racing is better. It's oh, just yeah. Yeah, everybody gets that a little bit of anxiety because they're like, oh, well, I know he's going to run like this, but it, this other person, maybe not. You know what I mean? And then I, some of that little nervousness comes into it at a time. Yeah. I mean, you know, I got after Adam some on those podcasts. I, you know, Adam's a good driver. Yeah, I like Adam. I'll race with him anytime. You know, I, I was upset during the race. I slept on it. I feel good. I feel like. I'd be comfortable with him racing right behind me today. Uh, it's just one of those things. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, we have a huge, like, huge driver pool of good drivers. This is all super competitive. Uh, we pretty much all have, like, a lot invested in this. So it's like, you know, come Friday night, I mean, we're all, like, trying to put, like, get our best finishes and do well and compete against each other. So, you know, we're all, uh, like, pretty sure all of us are all kind of super excited and nervous and just excited to do what we can oh yeah you know come fridays as soon as i punch i I punch in at work i'm ready to punch out and go home so i can get ready for the race yeah fridays are the longest days of the week yeah you know i'm ready to to get home get everything fired up settle into my little race rig here and go have some fun. And th- and that's, you know, the biggest thing about us is, you know, we might have our little tiffs and fights and arguments after the race. But, but with the competitiveness, that ad- that attitude's going to come out. That's a, that's that's kind of the cool part about it is, you know, it, we're having fun, but at the same point too, like this is competitive, this is fun. Yeah. And, and, you know, we, we have a good camaraderie against everybody. I mean, yeah, you know, we might fight and argue on Friday, but by Wednesday, we're ragging on each other, dogging each other out, having fun, you know, getting ready for the next race. That's, you know, and that's the one yeah. thing that I, that you know, we've watched uh, like our bye week coming this week is we're not going to have that, you know, full race. On Friday, we're gonna we're yeah. still gonna do a fun race for bragging rights and what have you, but it's not gonna be that. You know, I don't think I don't get the same feeling from that. I don't know. I think it'll still be the same feeling. Everybody's gonna get the same. It's race day, top feel. You know what I mean? Is it even though it's gonna be a fun race, it's still gonna be the same situation, I believe. Oh, it's going to be modified to New Hampshire. I can't wait. Yeah, it's I going mean, to be, it's going to be awesome. <laughs> um, and, you know, our league, we've watched other leagues during the week, you know, whether it be helping our league owner do some uh, race control. I, I'm sorry, but, you know, I hate to sound too braggy about it, but our league is pretty good compared to some of that other stuff we've been watching. And those are money leagues. Yeah. So, I mean, I think our – I would challenge anybody to watch our league and then go watch a money league and see who's better because I really think we have one of the better leagues. 
one thing that we already touched on it that we have that I feel like I've seen a lack of this kill leagues and make leagues so abrasive where you don't even want to be part of them anymore because I've had that is like what uh Chris and Chris said was like come out like we all we're all competitive but we also like just Wednesday we're back to normal we kind of let stuff go we don't care um sometimes yeah rivalries stay through but I've been in some leagues where like it just carries on there's um personal attacks going on in the discord for the entire night like into like three four in the morning because of a racing incident and a video game and that kills leagues like toxicity and we have like we have that but for a couple like an hour or two not days exactly you know we we the thing get... too with that brian is the communication between everybody yeah most definitely you know, we, we are a very, very active gr- group of guys in this Discord that we have. You know, we, uh, yeah, we're talking, we're, you know, doing whatever. We're having practices damn near every day of the week. Yeah. We race against each other. You know, for most of us, there's what, two? Some, some people race with our sister league the last night's. You know, so two to three times a week that we're racing against each other. And, you know, I think that's what's got us to the point where our racing, our product that we're putting out is where it is. Yeah, it's uh, definitely a good league. I'm glad I joined well, whenever I did. At first, I was supposed to be an ARCA driver. It's like the first ARCA driver to join, but luckily I... I was putting up really competitive times in practice, and Taylor was like, yeah, sure, we don't have any ARCA people right now, so you can go up to Cup. Yeah. And uh, now I'm a league admin with everybody else in here. League and, admin, and, and, and a race winner. Yep. Race winner. And... Race winner. You made it to the Final Four last season. Yeah, it was you know. definitely a fun league, and I enjoy... Even if it wasn't for that, even if I was back marker like the epitome of back marker where finishing last every race i would still have fun racing and like i help out in the server here i do the winner pictures to go up on the socials like i wouldn't be doing all that if i didn't enjoy this league as much as i do and the people that i race with yeah and uh, and to touch on another point too our admin team has been tremendously good for this league i think Everybody has a level head and puts their two cents in where it counts, and uh, that that means a lot. Trust me. Yeah, you know we we aren't we're not afraid to, you know, call each other out when we're saying or doing something stupid. You know, but it, it, we all actually give a damn about the the league. You know, we want us to succeed. We want to be, you know to grow and be, be that name that everybody knows. Yeah, most definitely. And I feel like we will keep on growing and I'm pretty sure Tabor here soon is going to start putting up some, uh, some recruitment races on just hosted for ARCA because we brought some people up. Yeah. Gonna get ARCA season started. I don't know when. And in a couple of weeks, I assume. It, it'll. It, I believe it's two. supposed to kick off the uh, night before our New Hampshire race. Yeah, they'll say the day yeah. before our Cup Series starts. Yeah. So. Yeah, so it's gonna gonna and, be a good future. Yeah, and and you know the Arca they're starting their season back at Daytona, and you know Daytona is always a crapshoot on how that's gonna go and. You know, if there's going to be any accidents or, or I should say, I shouldn't say how many, if there are going to be accidents, how big the accidents are. Yeah. Yeah. And with moving some of those ARCA guys up, who we think was going to, going to step up in the ARCA series now? You know, I, I, I'd like to see the, the uh, blue line racing guys step up and, you know, start running over everybody. 
Yeah. Hell, they already do that. Well, quite literally. Yeah, quite. I'm talking more. You know, running over everybody and finish and winning races and not you know murdering people. Is is uh Barkley? Is he part of them? Uh, I don't. Yeah, technically, yes. but that wasn't like the friend group yeah. that joined. He was a part yeah. of the initial group. Yeah, I think I think Barkley's gonna be the one, Justin Barkley, to really step up and uh, start going to the front. Yeah. Well. Uh... Also, you know, Jason Ricketts has gotten better, and he's been working, and uh, you know, he may be the uh, Derek Cope. Daytona 500 wild card sometime. You never know. Yeah. Um, you know, I before I forget about it, you know, we talked about going to race at New Hampshire in two weeks. Well, we have that race uh, being sponsored by uh, the McConey Setup Shop. Um, you know, they, they make and sell uh, setups for you know, multiple cars on iRacing. You know, yeah, quality, quality setups. You know, I, I've I've run a couple of their setups in the Open Officials, and you know, I've knocked out a couple nice top fives out of it. Where I'm normally a you know midfield guy, so look them up at www.maconeysetupshop.com. You know, if you want to learn more about them. All right. Well, as the uh, the replay is wrapping up, I'm doing my full trick to your lap. Anybody have any uh, closing remarks on uh, this first podcast about the uh, future rim dot, the uh, just the race in general? What uh, any closing remarks? Cause we've been going for a little over an hour. Yeah, I mean, I think we just hit on all of it. I mean. We got a good group of guys here. Um, I mean, I know we're kind of speaking for ourselves here, but we got a pretty good leader group, leadership group here. Um, you know, we got some great guys, some competitive racing, and you know, really looking forward to keep on doing this. Yeah, I'm going to stick around until I beat Michael Waltrip's 0 for 462 losing streak. So I think I've got another gonna... t- ten seasons to go before that. But yeah, I love it here. Yeah, you're gonna kill somebody whenever you do that. Somebody's gonna fucking have a heart attack once you win, because if you break a win streak or win winless streak that long, somebody gotta die. It's just it's the NASCAR way. Yeah, well, but, let's hope that doesn't happen. But uh, I don't see me winning anytime soon, so I think we're safe. Uh, you never know. Hey, nah, I see you coming out with a win, Travis. Don't don't let yourself down like that, man. You're a good driver. And. You know, we have Talladega coming up here in the next month or so, and, you know, that's anybody's race to win. Yeah, that's a true wild card on the schedule. Yeah. Was well, that it for everybody? Yeah. Uh, it, it was good, you know, getting with you guys and talking with you tonight. Yeah, thanks for putting up with my, uh, you know, BS. <laughs> Been fun. With the, was the uh, outro, Bob? Yep. Yeah, uh, give me like two seconds here. Um, Roll that beautiful bean footage. Yeah. See you guys.